Hello Norfolk and Nottinghamshire classes. Welcome to today's Destination Reader lesson, The BFG by Ryle Dahl. This is our 16th lesson of 20 lessons. Okay, so just like in the previous lessons, any important words will be written for you in red. Any questions that I have for you to answer will be written in blue and you'll be given some writing time. This will be written in green. <clears throat> okay, let's just check that you have everything ready for today's lesson. You should have a copy of the story, a strategy prompt sheet, a pencil or pen and a piece of paper or your home learning book. Make sure you've got all those things together, then press play and continue the lesson. Press pause now. Okay, great. Let's get started. The BFG by Raoul Dahl. Okay, so we are going to continue with strategy number three, inference. And I want you to tell me what plus what equals an inference. What plus what equals an inference? And why do good readers make inferences? Make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or on your home learning book. Press pause now. Okay, great. So you're back. So what plus what makes an inference? Well, you take the text clues or the author's clues and you add them with your background knowledge or your schema and you get an inference. And we make inferences because it helps us to understand the text better. So vocabulary for today's lesson. My turn boggled, your turn. My turn boggled, your turn. So if you are boggled, it means that you are astonished or surprised or baffled or confused by something. You're boggled. My turn, pal, mal, your turn. My turn, pal, mal, your turn. So pal, mal, if, it means that you're to do something in a confused and rushed and disorderly way. You're kind of running around. You're not sure what you're doing. You're doing it pal, mal. My turn, gravel, your turn. My turn, gravel, your turn. So gravel is like a whole load of pebbles or small stones and it can be used to cover an area of ground. For example, people might have gravel across their driveway, a whole load of little pebbles and small stones. Gravel. My turn, quiver, your turn. My turn, quiver, your turn. So if you quiver, you have a little slight trembling motion in your body and it's caused by a sudden emotion or feeling. Quiver. Okay, so we're going to continue with our one mark and two mark answers for this week. And let's just have a look at how we answer one mark and two mark questions. Okay, my turn. One mark questions need a short snappy answer. Your turn. My turn. One mark questions need a short, snappy answer. Your turn. Okay, great. And then we have two mark questions. My turn. Two mark questions need a PE answer. Your turn. My turn. Two mark questions need a PE answer. Your turn. And the PE stands for a point, which is your P. So you write the main idea you want to talk about and your E is the evidence and you prove your point by using some examples from the text. Okay, so I want us to get our books and open up to page 133. This chapter is called The Palace. I want you to have a little think in your head about what this chapter might be about. The title is The Palace. And if you remember from what we've just read, Sophie and the BFG are going to go and find the Queen in London and they've just arrived in the Queen's back garden. Okay, so I'm going to read and I want you to follow along. We're going to stop at points to ask questions along the way. By gumdrops, whispered the big friendly 
giant, is this really it? There, there's the palace, Sophie whispered back. Not more than a hundred yards away, through the tall trees in the garden, across the mown lawns and the tidy flower beds, the massive shape of the palace itself loomed through the darkness. It was made of whitish stone. The sheer size of it staggered the BFG. But this place is having a hundred bedrooms at least, he said. Easily, I should think, Sophie whispered. Then I is boggled. The BFG said, how was I possibly finding the one where the Queen is sleeping? Let's go a bit closer and have a look, Sophie whispered. Okay, we're going to stop there. And I've got a question. Why is the BFG overwhelmed by the palace? And it's a one mark question, so I'm going to give a short, snappy answer. I want you to listen while I think aloud. I think the BFG is overwhelmed by the palace because it is so big. I want you to have a little think about your answer. Say your answer out loud then make a note of the idea of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book. Why is the BFG overwhelmed by the palace? Press pause now. Okay great you're back and I wonder what you put. Did you put something similar to what I wrote? Okay, we're going to continue reading and stop at another point to ask a question. The BFG glided forward among the trees. Suddenly he stopped dead. The great ear in which Sophie was sitting began to swivel around. Hey, Sophie whispered, you're going to tip me out. Shh, the BFG whispered back, I is hearing something. He stopped behind a clump of bushes. He waited. The air was, was still swinging this way and that. Sophie had to hang on tight to the side of it to save herself from tumbling out. The BFG pointed through a gap in the bushes and there, not more than 50 yards away, she saw a man pad, padding softly across the lawn. He had a guard dog with him on a leash. The BFG stayed as still as a stone. So did Sophie. The man and the dog walked on and disappeared into the darkness. You was telling me that they as no soldiers in the back garden, the, whisper, the BFG whispered. He wasn't a soldier, Sophie whispered. He was some sort of watchman. We'll have to be careful. I is not too worried, the BFG said. These waxy ears of mine is picking up it. Even the noise of a man breathing the other side of this garden. How much longer before it begins to get light? Sophie whispered. Very short, the BFG said. We must go pell-mell for leather now. He glided forward through the vast garden and once again Sophie noticed he seemed to melt into the shadows wherever he went. His feet made no sound at all even when he was walking on gravel. Suddenly, they were right up close against the back wall of the great palace. The BFG's head was level with the upper windows, one flight up, and Sophie, sitting in his ear, had the same view. In all the windows on that floor, the curtains seemed to be drawn. There were no lights showing anywhere. In the distance, they could hear the muted sound of traffic going round Hyde Park Corner. The BFG stopped and put on his other put his other ear, the one Sophie wasn't sitting in, close to the first window. No, he whispered. What are you listening for? Sophie whispered back. For breathing, the BFG whispered. I is able to tell if it is a man-human being or a lady by the breathing voice. We has a man in there, startling a little bit too. He glided on, flattening his tall, thin black cloaked body against the side of the building. He came to the next window. He listened. Nope, he whispered. He moved on. This room is empty, he whispered. He listened in at several more windows, but at each one he shook his head and moved on. When he came to the window in the very centre of the palace, he listened, but did not move on. Ho, ho, he whispered. We has a lady sleeping in there. Sophie felt a little quiver go running down her spine. But who? She whispered back. And we're going to stop there. And I've got a question for you.
The text reads, Sophie felt a little quiver going down her spine. What does this tell you about how she is feeling? And it's a one mark question. So I want you to have a little think, then say your answer out loud, then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book. The text reads, Sophie felt a little quiver going down her spine. What does this tell you about how she is feeling? Press pause now. Okay, great. So you're back and the question was, Sophie felt a little quiver going down her spine. What does this tell you about how she's feeling? And I've said, I think Sophie feels a little quiver going down her spine because she's feeling excited that they have found the Queen's bedroom. Is that similar to what you put? Okay, we're going to keep reading. The BFG put a finger to his lips for silence. He reached up through the open window and parted the curtains if, ever so slightly. The orange glow from the night sky over London crept into the room and cast a glimmer of light onto its walls. It was a large room, a lovely room, a rich carpet, gilded chairs, a dressing table, a bed, and on the pillow of the bed lay the head of a sleeping woman. Sophie suddenly found herself looking at a face she had seen on stamps and coins and in the newspapers all her life. For a few seconds, she was speechless. Is that her? The BFG whispered. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, Sophie whispered back. The BFG wasted no time. First and very carefully, he started to raise the lower half of the large window. The BFG was an expert on windows. He had opened thousands of them over the years to blow his dreams into children's bedrooms. Some windows got stuck. Some were wobbly. Some creaked. He was pleased to find that the Queen's window slid upward like silk. He pushed the lower half as far as it would go as to leave a place on the sill for Sophie to sit. Next, he closed the crack in the curtains. Then, with a finger and thumb, he lifted Sophie out of his ear and placed her on the window ledge with her legs dangling just inside the room but behind the curtains. Now, don't you go... Now, don't you go tip-toppling backwards, the BFG whispered. You must always be holding on tight with both hands to the inside of the window sill. Sophie did as he said. It was summertime in London and the night was not too cold, but don't forget that Sophie was wearing only her thin nighty. She would have given anything for a dressing gown, not to keep her warm, but to hide the whiteness of her nighty from the watchful eyes in the garden below. And we're going to stop there because I've got a question. I want to know, why was Sophie cold? And it's a one mark question, so it's a short, snappy answer. I want you to say your answer out loud, then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book. Why was Sophie so cold? Press pause now. Okay, great. You're back. Why was Sophie so cold? Well, I said I think that Sophie is cold because it's night time and she is only wearing her nighty. So that is why she's so cold. Is that similar to your answer? Well done if that's what you got too. Okay, we're going to keep reading. The BFG was taking the glass jar from the pocket of his cloak. He unscrewed the lid. Now, very cautiously, he poured the precious dream into the wide end of his trumpet. He steered the trumpet through the curtains far into the room, aiming at a place where he knew the bed to be. He took a deep breath. He puffed out his cheeks and poof, he blew. Now he was withdrawing the trumpet, sliding it out very, very carefully like a thermometer. Is your right sitting there? He whispered. Yes, Sophie murmured. She was quite terrified, but determined not to show it. She looked down over her shoulder. The ground seemed miles away. It was a nasty drop. How long will a dream take to work? Oh, sorry, Sophie is speaking. How long will the dream take to work? Sophie whispered. Some takes an hour, the BFG whispered back. Some is quicker. Some is still slower still, but it is sure to find her in the end. Sophie said nothing. I is going off to wait in the garden, the BFG whispered. When is you wanting me, you call out my name and I is coming very quick. Will you hear me? 
Sophie whispered. You're always forgetting about these, the BFG whispered, smiling and pointing to his great ears. Goodbye, Sophie whispered. Suddenly, unexpectedly, the BFG leaned forward and kissed her gently on the cheek. Sophie felt like crying. When she turned to look at him, he was already gone. He had simply melted away into the dark garden. And I want to stop there. And I've got a question for you. What made Sophie want to cry and why? I want you to have a little think, then say your answer out loud. Then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book. What made Sophie want to cry and why? Press pause now. Okay, so here's what I wrote. What made Sophie want to cry and why? I said, I think Sophie wanted to cry because she was feeling frightened and alone. And because this is a two mark question, I'm going to have to back it up with some evidence. So I've said, I think this because in the text it says that Sophie quite, felt quite terrified but didn't want to show show this. Also, the BFG had to leave Sophie alone on the windowsill whilst he waited in the garden, hidden from view. So I've made my point. I said that she was feeling frightened and alone. And I've said why I've given some evidence from the text that um, she, in the text it said that she was terrified but didn't want to show this. And also that she had to be left alone on the windowsill while the BFG was hiding from view. Okay. Great. We've finished the end of that chapter. Tomorrow we're going to continue reading the BFG and we're going to carry on making inferences. And so on your piece of paper, on your home learning book, you could make a prediction about what you think will happen next in our story. And I'm going to give you a little clue to help. The next chapter is called The Queen. So what do you think this chapter will be about? Okay, well done for joining in today's lesson. Um, great reading and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye.